All right, guys, to no one's surprise, when it comes to solar, you can call me the village idiot. Now, you would not call this guy the village idiot. This is Garrett from AM Solar. He is the, uh, the president of the company here, and he's gonna explain something that uh, people like me, village idiots, assume when they're buying solar. And so this is what this video is gonna be about. Sometimes you see a smoking deal on Amazon with uh, solar panels, a battery, a charge controller, an inverter for like $1,000 or 1500 bucks and you think, oh my God, I'm gonna buy that one because it's, it's in my price range. But we are gonna specifically ask and talk to Garrett about why that's maybe not a good idea. And we're gonna go through my components. There are, I'm gonna guess 20, what do you think, 20? Maybe 120. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, there's a lot of components. We're gonna talk about the kits they do here at AM Solar for the schoolies and the vans and why it is important. And now before I show you my kit, I just wanna point out that one thing that you get with AM Solar is customer support. You cannot call Jeff Bezos and, and get uh, information. Me and the schoolie, well, really, Dean put this together, and I'm, I'm not blaming him, by the way, but there's a couple things are wrong, so we're gonna fix those things first, and then Garrett is gonna go over my system and tell us all about it and the components and why there are things like an on-off switch for power and why there's big fuses and things like that. And take advantage of the customer support. Don't think you're gonna annoy us or that you're super smart. Just send us pictures along the way, ask lots of questions, call us before you get a headache, and uh, we'll save you a lot of trouble. So some people look at our kits online, like the inverter kit that Jack's got, which is the 2000 volt amp uh, Victron Multi Plus, and they think, wow, your inverters are pretty expensive. Well, you need to make sure you're getting a complete inverter kit, and it takes a lot to make an inverter run. So you need the inverter, yes, then you also need the digital multi-control to control it, you need the comm cable to go between them, and then you need the MK3 programming dongle to set the pro programming parameters for the type of batteries you have. If you don't have those things, which a lot of people end up not getting, you've got a really expensive paperweight. And so, uh, uh, I'll just say Village Idiot because it, it's most descriptive, but if you buy from some place with no customer service and you try to install this and it doesn't work, how would a person like me or someone else know how to get this? At a certain point, I'm guessing someone would get frustrated and then call a store and, and then beg them to install it. I mean, Yeah, a lot of the time uh, people will buy stuff and then call us and ask us how to install it and you know we're we're, we're a for-profit business you know we can't just be solving the world's problems on how to program inverters just get it from us from the first place do it right and we'll be happy to help you take care of that yeah all right so let's go through some other components because you know like i said i'm using myself i'm using myself in it as an example because when i first started this i knew nothing about solar i just thought okay you get the four basic things, the panel, the charge controller, the battery, the inverter, and then it just magically works. And all this stuff, like the cables for example, oh, I'll just pick that up at the hardware store. That can't be too much. But what in reality, what's the story with all that? Yeah, so maybe let's just start about talking about the roof on your rig. So obviously you need solar panels, but then you need something to hold the solar panels to the roof and then you need sealant to hold that and then you need your wire harness and then your wire harness feeds into a combiner box uh, your ZAMP panels use these connectors it goes into our combiner box that uh, covers the roof penetration this combines them in parallel and then you've got these thick cables that then go down to a disconnect switch that lets you turn on and off solar. Maybe you're wanting to troubleshoot something, uh, see how much solar is contributing, you know, versus every other system. And then it goes down to a charge controller. Jack's got the MPP 100-50 because he has four 170 watt panels on his roof. Then it'll go down to a breaker and Jax has the 60 amp breaker and then it goes down to the batteries and all of these connections 
Uh, they require lugs and heat shrink and screws to hold them on. And that's just stuff that you're not going to think of typically as you're designing your kit on your first trip to the hardware store. If you get it from us, we've installed thousands of these. We know everything that's needed and we include it all in our kits. So important point there is that if you do go to the hardware store, now I'm not talking about electrical engineers, electricians, people who are familiar with the stuff, but I'm talking about people just getting into this lifestyle thinking, I just need four things and that's it. So why, uh, why would I buy something more expensive when I can get it on Amazon or something else for cheap? Uh, uh, first of all, you're, you're not going to know what you need. I would have never known what I would have needed and without the diagram kit, uh, without all the components, there's no way in hell this would have uh, been put together. It was actually the only job where we did not have to go to the hardware store multiple times uh, because everything was included in the kit. You can ask Dean about that if you don't believe me. But um, and, and actually, tell me what you told me before about Victron and the quality. What, what did you equate it to? It is the something of inverters. Uh, it's like, did I use a car analogy? Yeah. So it's like... The Mercedes of inverter systems, whereas uh, you know maybe something you'll find on uh, Amazon could be uh, Hyundai. Yeah, well, actually, I, I like Hyundai's, but I know too. Oh, well, <laughs> like a beat, uh, uh, an old beat up uh, Russian car <laughs> from the fifties or sixties, or, or, or actually a Volkswagen bus. Those things are heaping piles. Um, <laughs> trigger warning for the Volkswagen people. Sorry, so, Hyundai fans. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you said before this is like the Bentley of the uh, inverters. Now, why are these components better than other ones, for example? Like I had this one on my first bus, and now I have this one. So, Well, uh, marine-rated components, that's one nice thing about Victron. And I really like the Bluetooth communication feature and the ability to network with all the other components in the system because if you get everything that's the same brand as Victron, it's all going to talk to each other. It's all going to talk to you in a language that you're familiar with. So he's referring to the, there's an, two different apps I have. One is for my monitor and one is for my charge controller. Yes, and I can app, monitor them. two devices that you log into within that app. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, they, you know, they convey data in the same format so you, it's not a steep learning curve for two different things. Mm -hmm. And actually one time I, by looking at my app, I knew that my alternator was going out. I was not getting a charge from my alternator. So I quickly drove to the O'Reilly, uh, swapped out my alternator and uh, exchange warranty and, and then didn't have a breakdown. That's a good deal. Victron's <laughs> good stuff. We like to break our system down into five different subsystems. These subsystems include solar charging, alternator charging, battery bank, inverter charger, and DC distribution. And that applies to schoolies and vans, which we put in a category of vehicle called empty shell. So right here we have three Life Blue 200 amp hour lithium batteries that are going into this rig to make a 600 amp hour battery system. One of the things I tell people when they're trying to decide whether to get AGM or Life Blue batteries, or AGM or lithium batteries, is if you start off with AGM batteries, you need to pick the size that you're going to stick with for a long time. You can't add to AGM batteries. If you mix old batteries with new batteries, they're going to have slightly different voltages that they're going to rest at, and mixing those voltages forces them to operate at voltages that aren't ideal for the health of the batteries, and it reduces the life of both groups of batteries, new and old AGM batteries. But if you go with lithium batteries, you can start off with 200 and maybe like, yeah, 200 is nice, but I need more. I'll add another 200. And then maybe three years later, you add another 200. This is nice. This, when you use lithium batteries, you can build a system that grows with your lifestyle. So this area right here is a test station and uh, we use some of the components in it to pre-charge lithium batteries. Uh, like if we were adding some Battleborne batteries to a system that already had Battleborne batteries, we'd want to make sure that the batteries currently in the rig were topped off at 100% and then the new batteries also need to be topped off at 100% before we mix them together. So that's what this all does. This is our shipping department where all of the orders get packaged. Um, we've got the most commonly used items scattered all over here. You know, our mount feet, 
They come in bags that includes every single thing you'd ever want from the tape at the bottom of them to screws if you screw into the roof to all the hardware used to grab onto the side of the solar panel. We've got a stack of combiner boxes about to get shipped out. Um, we've got an order on the desk that's ready to be processed. Uh, our shipping department is very busy. Over here we have our panel prep area where we put the mount sets on the panels and modify the wire harness. This is an interesting situation where we have back-to-back -back mounts to double the surface area. Uh, we have it on this side, but not this side. So we typically do this in a situation where we have to get very close to the leading edge of a rig where a wind might come up under that. We want to just double reinforce that. And, uh, this modification to the wire harness, we take a typical ZAMP solar panel, we cut off their connector here and splice on our custom 10-2 cable, and then this feeds into the combiner box. And stacks of cardboard for shipping the panels, stacks of ZAMP panels. You have all the wires here too? Oh yeah, all the wire, uh, wire counter, so you know, just depending on how much current is expected to flow through a certain circuit, depends on how much wire we use. Like this is eight gauge. Uh, this would work for about uh, 300 watts of solar. And then we can go down to, uh, I think this is four gauge, so that would be you know, maybe 680 watts of solar. I think that's what I have. Inverter cable. Yeah, you have four gauge. So I've mentioned that we have our systems built around five subsystems, which are solar, alternator, battery, inverter, and DC distribution. We also have pre-configured kits that have combinations of those subsystems already in them. And those pre-configured kits are designed to give people an idea of uh, features versus cost when they start their shopping. So they can get an idea, if I want lithium batteries, looks like I'm going to have to spend this much money. If I want... Uh, 680 watts of solar, it looks like it puts me in this category. So we have those pre-configured kits that people can buy and they can also just use it as inspiration. So maybe they see, I want, uh, I like everything about this kit, but I want more solar or I want, uh, can you sw swap out those 300 amp hour AGM batteries for maybe just something smaller like 220 amp hours of AGM batteries. And we have pre-configured kits for schoolies, Vans, uh, motorhomes, campers, trailers, uh, we're working on boats. Uh, we're just trying to make it in every product category to help people get an idea of the range of possibilities and uh, how much they might have to spend. So guys, hopefully this is uh, informative. Uh, again, I, I consider myself a village idiot. Um, if I was trying to piece something together, I don't even know if it would uh, charge my cell phone. And maybe it would fry it. Um, but Garrett, maybe you could, I want to ask Garrett what happens when, if someone needs help, who do they call, who do they talk to, and how do you guys uh, walk them through that process? The easiest thing for us to handle is if you go on our website and you uh, click on support request, fill out all the information on that form, and what that does is it gives us a background of everything that you've got in your system, which is really important because uh, you know, if you don't give us that information, we have to search through email records and read a bunch of material that might not be relevant. So fill out that support request form. And we get a lot of these where we've got a very streamlined system for processing these and you'll usually hear back from us within a couple hours. And if it's emergency, give us a phone call. We can walk you through it on a, on a phone call. But uh, the support request form online is the easiest. It gets logged into our program that allocates it to the right people and prioritizes it. And uh, we, we, we're very responsive with that. And, and this is uh, like an electrical engineer which gets on the phone, right? Yeah, electrical engineer on the phone, or if not an engineer, somebody that's spent a lot of time installing the actual components and is familiar with how your type of rig would work. Now, um, uh, these are DIY kits. I know people are, are, are DIYing to save money. How much money in labor would my kit cost to install if, if they wanted to uh, have you guys install it? Like, how much money are they saving with all the diagrams, the customer support, the everything else? Uh, we got to think about that, how to answer that. I'm not quite sure what you're asking on that one. So, like, if you were to just drop the rig off and have us install it? Yeah. Or, okay. Um, 
So your solar array would probably be about 15 hours getting that going. Your alternator charging system, maybe seven hours. Um, the battery bank might be eight hours. Uh, the inverter system about 17 hours, your DC distribution system one hour. So sum all that together, multiply it by our current shop labor rate of $130 an hour. And it's, it's not as much as the equipment, but uh, <laughs> it gets done within a week and it gets done perfectly. Yeah, yeah. So again, they, the, the idea is they, they try to supply you guys to save money, to do it in far off places. Uh, and, and they handle the support and everything else, all the components, every single thing. Like I literally did not have to go to the hardware store for one thing. It wasn't one, it wasn't one. So they're, you're gonna save thousands of dollars. So if you guys wanna save money, save it on the installation, do it yourself, buy the nice components, don't buy the cheap stuff made in China, don't burn out your panels, don't cause a chain reaction inside because that's what happened to a friend of ours. And, and I swear, uh, it's also tax free. So. So call these guys, and, and even if you need a custom kit, um, these are your guys right yeah, here. We don't charge for tech support. Uh, these are big ticket items. You're spending a lot of money with us. You're putting a lot of trust in us, and we're gonna do a good job on it. All right guys, so mission accomplished. We corrected all the mistakes on our DIY install. Um, so the system is functioning, the system is working. And now we have uh, Garrett actually to, why don't, why don't we get a little rundown of my system? Here, let me jump inside. Okay. Let's get a little rundown from input to output, I guess. All right, so uh, solar comes down from the roof and... Yeah, I think it's this. This one and this one. Yeah, one of them, um, yeah, but it's this one. Goes down into a master disconnect switch. Then it goes to the solar charge controller, which reformats the energy from the solar panels and turns it into something that can safely be fed onto a battery bank. And then it goes out of that to a DC breaker and then into this, uh, which we call our positive bus here, that's how we're treating this side of the fuse, and then it goes on to the positive terminal of the battery. And with lead acid batteries, you need a solar charge controller that does temperature compensation. And with uh, Victron charge controllers, they just sense ambient, which is fine because it's in the same environment as the batteries. If this were in a different area, you would network over Bluetooth with your battery monitor temperature sensor and that would get a temperature reading that way. But anyway, on the battery monitoring system, you have the negative coming off the batteries. There's one negative coming off the batteries. It doesn't touch chassis. It doesn't touch any loads. It just goes straight to the shunt and then all the loads, negative, chassis, everything come off of this side which forces all the electrons to flow through this little black area. And that's the only way it can get m monitored. You have to capture all of the electrons. Uh, a lot of DIY installers, they just put this kind of willy-nilly and have other loads coming off of the negative. And that's like, if, if you wanna, you know, you, like you stick it on a tree branch, you're still missing a bunch of the trees. You gotta stick it around the trunk of the tree if you wanna catch everything going to the tree. So. You stick it, the easiest way to capture everything is right off the negative, nothing coming off the negative other than maybe a temp sensor, and all the electrons pass through there. And then this reports through a data cable to a battery monitor inside his living quarters that does some complex algorithms on it to figure out the exact state of charge. And then these are two six volt batteries uh, connected in series, which makes it a 12 volt battery bank, uh, 400 amp hours total. Uh, they feed uh, the inverter here. So we take the positive, go through here, go through this uh, class T catastrophic fuse, then a master disconnect switch. And then this is the inverter that t takes the 12 volts and converts it to 120 volts AC. And then coming off of that, it goes this line to your breaker box 
for all of your loads. So this one is the main one. This would shut off all the outputs, and then these are all individual loads. Uh, and, and for for village idiot uh, terminology, this is where all my household outlets come from. This is the fuse that uh, is is in charge of them. So uh, that that gets sent out to the regular plugs. Um, you know, something for your hair dryer or your Instapot or something like that. Another thing the inverter does besides inverting 12 volt, turning it into 120 volts AC, is it takes shore power. So shore power comes in through this, goes through this breaker as an input, and that can just be passed through to all the outlets if you're plugged in, or it can also uh, be converted down to 12 volts DC or whatever charging voltage is needed to uh, charge these batteries and I talked earlier about temperature compensation with a solar charge controller temperature compensation is part of that and it comes through it, it gets that signal through this cable that's connected on the negative terminal of the battery there and then for DC loads uh, they come off the battery and it goes through this thing called a battery protect which prevents you from overly discharging your batteries and harming them and then it goes to the uh, DC fuse panel so my DC fuse panel is uh, upstairs I guess you could call it because we're in the basement of the bus uh, I have a panel and there is a battery monitor and the inverter uh, power uh, supply so I can remotely turn the inverter on or off and then I can adjust the input of the shore power from 15 to 30 amps yeah. uh, up on top and uh, and that's where all my, my 12 volt things are kind of connected positive up high negative down low and so this guys I just wanted to share with you is a complete uh, schoolie system it is a complete van life system uh, this all these little components you do not see when you when there's some smoking deal on Amazon for four different components for some smoking deal. So uh, when you are buying the cheap stuff, when you're buying just the actual components, you're missing out on a lot. That's why it seems like it's a great deal. So and you're also not having tech support, right. so uh, which is invaluable. Uh, it, it, this I would say is the equivalent of trying to put together your own iPhone and not getting Apple Care, right? <laughs> What you need is <laughs> you need the Apple Care for a, a phone that is put together. Because if you're anything like me, you are a village idiot, unless you have some electrical background or uh, you're a handyman or something like that, or just a regular genius. So One thing we should also mention is there's an alternator charging system that's kind of off the camera here. That's doesn't show as much. Uh, it's just some thick cables and a battery combiner relay. That, that's by the... true. I can point that out here. The positive comes up, uh, and, and this is where I get uh, energy from the alternator, and uh, and it goes in reverse when I'm char when my solar is full. It trickle charges the the battery, the starter battery. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys. So there you have it. Uh, thanks again for uh, the explanation, Garrett. Yeah. Thanks for setting me up with all these wonderful companies here. Lifeline, Victron, AM Solar, Zamp solar panels up on the roof. So you got, uh, what, you still got Schoolie 5 discount code? Yes. So if you want 5% off. And uh, uh, Dometic hooked you up solid. Too. Oh, yeah, they did too. <laughs> yeah. We got a lot of nice people around here helping me out. So anyways, this is what a full, complete solar system looks like. Uh, and so if anybody has any questions, please don't ask me. I'm, I'm the village idiot. Call these guys and ask them. They are electrical engineers.